Hello, Balmy Badger Army. Hey, Badger Army. Welcome to the show. Yes, it seems like forever since we've been able to do it on the bench, but it's on its usual time slot. And this one's going to be perhaps an extra long one, and we might even squeeze in an extra video with Nick as well, which would be great, won't it? Indeed. Now, uh, first off, we're going to talk about the uh, Christmas light switch on at Romford featuring S Club 3. It is Christmas light switch on season. Most they're definitely. Happening all, they're happening all over Essex at the moment. Um, there's a, there's been various ones in London. There've probably been a few where you are, where there's lots of different, where you get lots of random people performing, including. Uh, so we get lots. There's lots of uh, like theatrical stuff. So That's you get right. lots from pantomimes. Oh yes, that was fantastic, wasn't it? And yes, lots indeed. of different things. Lots of youngsters singing as well. Yes. What else are we going to talk about? Uh, your experience on EastEnders. Yep, we'll talk a bit about that. My experience meeting Joe Swash. And we might talk a bit about Thanksgiving and Black Friday as well. As Thanksgiving definitely. is today. Indeed, so yes. happy Thanksgiving to all our US viewers. Indeed. Right, so let's start off with the Christmas light switch on, Nick. So, yes. Um, so, yeah, as we were mentioning, they're happening all over the country at the moment. Mm -hmm. and, and the one in, uh, in our hometown of Romford was uh, a couple of weeks ago. Yes. And the main headliner was... was three of S Club 7. Indeed. It's been 20 years since S Club 7 were had a TV show, Most Miami definitely. 7. That's right. And didn't they do a second series of something as well? I think they did, yeah. I Ain't think they, they, did, they like did a S film. Party? They did a film called Seeing Double as well. Yes, you're right, they yeah. did. Now, yes, you're right. So I remember yeah. that now. So 20 years ago, it's like everything they released was going to number one or at the very least top three. Mm -hmm. 20 years on, three of them are playing at Romford Market. But um. <laughs> um, I mean, you know, I mean, you know, we love Romford Market here, Most but, it's, definitely. but it's not Wembley. <coughs> definitely That's not Wembley. That's one of its main selling points. And but, also, um, I would, I would say to you is that the the twenty years has been kind to them. They all look pretty much the same. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, all look the same. Um, Joe was wearing a very weird top though, wasn't she? She you was. Know? It was yeah. like something that I would say that, uh, I don't want to say it really just in case you're watching Joe, but it's something that Pat Butcher would have worn at Christmas time. Sorry, love. But yeah, it is true. It was like a bizarre tinselly top with red, yellow, blue, and some other colors on there. It was very bizarre, and in miles, not very flattering. Oh, Indeed. Joe, Joe from S Club 7 is actually from the same area as us. Most definitely. Yeah, she's Hi, from Joe. Clear Road, quite, quite uh, not far from me. Indeed. So, so and sorry I actually about that, Joe. a couple of times in PC World back Ooh, in the day. Where in the world? Uh, there. And it was... Uh, <laughs> And so it was. So it was Joe, Bradley, and Tina. Tina, and yes. Bradley looked on point. His fashion sense has not lost a beat. He is really, really, honestly. Uh, when I saw him, I was like, "Man, you're looking your after yourself." Because I reckon he must be about our age, isn't he? He must be, even not a little if bit not, older. If not older, I think. So yeah. All, yeah, because they were, they were, they're all about our age. Mm. Go that way. I think Joe is a couple of years older. That's right. But, yes, um, that's what the boss said. She said yeah. she's a tiny bit older. Yeah, and we and I think um, and yeah, I think uh, Bradley and Tina mm. who are probably about the same age. I don't think any of them have actually aged over the years. No, anyway. I don't think so. I don't think so at all. Uh, Tina looked on point as well. She looked very, um, you know, modern quite attractive you know very well done up and yep. obviously the same for Bradley he was looking on point it's just Joe wearing the weird Christmas jumper yeah. but uh, apparently S Club 7 may be reforming for a world tour Ooh, next year really so, that's gonna be interesting so we can brag that we saw them saw half of them for free before anyone else indeed at Romford Market at Romford Market but yeah, what are your main thoughts on the main performance, Nick? Because obviously they built it up so much, didn't they? And they, they were did. like, yes, this is going to happen. Everyone, it's coming up right, and it's now, and bang. What are your thoughts on it now? You know what? I I thought it came across well. You know, their voices didn't sound too bad. No. I thought, you know, I thought they sung, they sung quite well. They still mm -hmm. tried to move around and stuff. That's right. They made you know. it active for the audience. And I did like the fact, obviously, I'm, I'm a bit of a Bradley fan by the looks of it, but um, he did get the audience rolling up. He was like, oggy, oggy, oggy. And everyone was saying, oi, oi, oi. And all this stuff. He was determined to get people talking. I think that was a great thing. Some of the other down points for me was, I think they did try and get people to sing along to the songs and it did flop. No one knew the words apart from me. Yeah. So, and I think... 
I was known, no word of a lie, someone, one of the actual students said to me, oh yeah, I went to the S Club 3 song and there was just some sad guy near the front singing to himself. And you know who that sad guy was? It was me! <laughs> Actually speechless. I mean, it's easy to forget that a large chunk, large chunk of that audience were not born when, you know, they had their first hit. Exactly. So to assume that they knew and were able to sing along was probably slightly over anticipating it. Just like, I really hope all these kids' parents are here and remember these songs. You know what? Even some of the parents didn't because I was the only sad bloke singing along. Or brave enough to. I'm not too sure which one. But yes, amusingly enough, Nick was in the same crowd, but we didn't even know each other was there. Yeah, and I wish we you, had... you were quite far into the crowd. I was I think right I at was, the front. I was further out. That's right. But yes, so that was probably my main bugbear, was the fact that the audience participation, apart from uh, Bradley's uh, pushing them along, was a bit nil, really, yeah. which was a shame. But it was a great show, really fun. You could tell that they all had a good laugh. They were in it for a good laugh. Joe was like, my hometown Romford, and all this getting really trying to hype up the crowd. So my thoughts on the performance, yes, there was a few bum notes where they should have rehearsed probably a teeny bit more, but I thought it was great. On the upside, Badger Junior had a great time. It was free. I can't really complain, apart from Joe's dress sense. Honestly, love, hire a fashion consultant. Anyway, what are your thoughts, Nick? As I say, you know, it's all it's all good fun, and you know, and you know, I I enjoyed it. You know, it yeah, brought and back they, some it brought back some memories. Yeah, and they they did of course. And, yes, most definitely, and they did of course. Uh, bash out the hits as well Indeed, they? They can did. you name some of the hits Nick so we had S Club Party we had Bring It All Back that's right and they finished with a giant performance of Reach which is probably their best known song most of it and of course one of their well known ones yeah and of course they did talk about their experience with uh, Children in Need some of the good things that the band have done obviously how fast the 20 years have gone trust me I know that because we're in the same boat yep how fast has 20 years gone Nick really fast. That fast. Exactly. Sorry, I didn't know he was doing comic timing, but yes. And of course, now we're going to talk about um, Nick's experience on EastEnders, and that's going to lead on to another story as well. Indeed. Of course, um, of, so uh, back in September, I went along to Elstree and then got driven along somewhere else to appear in EastEnders. It's Did you have a bag the, over your head? No. It's okay. one of the holy grails of extradom. And ever since I began my extra work, I've wanted to, uh, I've wanted to get involved in that, and I did. And uh, you can see the result. You can, you can still watch the result. It's from last Thursday, so the 21st of November, on iPlayer. And it's about, uh, it's about, I think it's, I think it's about six minutes in, where you can see a courtroom scene where Jack Branning pushes someone else out of a court, out of uh, like a courtroom foyer, and there's a few of us in the background going, "What on earth's happening?" Indeed, yeah. The thing with those is that you're never really sure how much of you is going to be seen on screen because ultimately you aren't the focal point. No. And, you know, I don't, I don't do extra work just to be seen on screen. No. You know, and, and if you are, then, you know, you're, then it's not for you. But, uh, but you know, it's a, gr it's a great atmosphere. You meet lots of good, positive people. And I actually got seen quite prominently on screen. I was going to say, yeah, reaction. you did, didn't you? Are you um, pleased that you made the most of the opportunity as absolutely. well? Absolutely, mm. absolutely. Are you hoping that they're going to call you back? Because it wasn't you actually the dad of one of the prominent characters? Uh, not this time. Okay, but it was quite a prominent piece in the scene, though, wasn't it? Yeah, it was... Uh, well, ultimately, we were just all people in the background, but... Uh, so, but yeah, it's the thing is they originally they give you certain roles, but things can change. Right, this is true. So, yeah. the, so it's kind because of, the thing because the thing with extra Drum is is you can you can come up with a whole backstory for your character, um, or they can give one to you. Okay. So you know, so you can say so. Although it wasn't re my, although my role wasn't really referred to um, mm. during the scene, you know, you wouldn't necessarily have known that I was the father of a defendant. Okay, then, yeah. There. You know, because obviously we weren't the focal point. I mean, there was another, there's another, there's uh, somebody else in the scene who I actually saw at another bit of filming on Monday, who's uh, one of the suspects, and he has his head pushed down and wow, moved okay. And one of the characters is shouting, saying, "You can't hide, hide and stuff like that." And so it's pretty cool then. It was, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, 
but yeah it's it's really it's it's really you know it's interesting to be part it's really interesting to be part of yeah and it kind of like all thunders through really quickly nice um and uh, I've spoke very briefly to uh, Scott Maslin, who plays Jack Branning. Okay. And uh, the other character whose name escapes me now, but yes. Ah, cool. So that leads us on to another EastEnders topic. It's a bit of an EastEnders special today, I guess. And we're talking about uh, the fact that I met Joe Swash at the weekend. Yes, albeit in very unusual circumstances. It was, yes. I met him whilst me and Badger Jr. were toy collecting at the weekend. So I was hunting for Venoms. Uh, Badger Jr. was hunting for like Power Rangers toys and Ghostbusters and of course uh, TMNT and the list goes on and on and all the different toys that he loves and uh, we were hunting for those and all of a sudden I was like what's that vo I recognize that voice you know when you recognize a voice because I've watched enough of Joe Swash's content and I think he's been on ITV more times than you can shake a stick at. I briefly saw him when I was in the audience for Celebrity Game Night, which was shown exactly. on Channel 5 earlier Exactly. In the year. So I think, you know, his sort of voice is synonymous with the British public. So I heard this slightly squeaky, squeaky lovable voice, not as annoying as Joe Pasquale, but still quite nice. And of course, I was like, right, I know who you are. And I stormed Trooper up that way barged in on his conversation and went oh you're a toy collector too what are you guys getting today and then i proceeded to annoy him for 10 minutes <laughs> was he visibly annoyed no no Good. he loved it he loved it we were having a nice chat uh he was getting some gi joe stuff obviously i'd found a new venom figure that i was after and uh yeah it was really nice really approachable man really kind really having a good laugh and really up for a bit of a chat and we had two lots of chats actually so I called him once in there and then i was like right i'm gonna grab him again and say bye and all that sort of thing and i didn't sort of say to him oh you're joe swash and i didn't like fanboy up and things like that i just talked to him normally that's actually a really good way to go about it yeah you know, i thought a, so you know if you're t because the chances are they probably they probably quite enjoy it if you just have a regular conversation yeah and that's legitimately what we did we just sat and well we just stood and talked about toy collecting for a bit and i think it was really nice and uh, we didn't worry about uh, you know i wasn't like sign this or anything like that i just legitimately just had a chat with him and got to uh, to know him a little bit and what he collects of toys and all this sort of thing. So it was a really nice experience at Nerdbase. Free plug there, mate. But yeah, anyway, so what else would you like to talk about, Nick? But yeah, I had a lovely experience talking to Joe Swash. It was and it just goes to show that it actually pays that if you try and get to speak to the speak to these people in a regular way rather than just fanboying, fangirling over over them, then who knows, you might get a lot more from it. Exactly. Um, exactly. So today we mentioned today is today is Thanksgiving. And Black Friday. And tomorrow, tomorrow is of Black course. Tomorrow is Black Friday. So I think um, which is traditionally greeted with um, videos what? of Americans going mad over discounted TVs trying to kill each other yeah and the thing is you know there you're you know no no injury is worth a discounted TV I was gonna I say think, lives matter guys yes, come on I think now the big I think you know I mean thanks the one thing I will say about Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. we don't just want to focus on Black Friday. Thanksgiving Most definitely. is, you know, it's about it's about having a sense of gratitude for what you've got. Can I have a Thanksgiving holiday, Nick? Um, that would be nice, wouldn't it? It would be nice. Yeah. But I'll tell you what we need to do. We need to promote hashtag Thanksgiving for UK. Get us the day off as well, guys. Because it's important to have a sense of gratitude for, you know, things that are going on. You Most know, definitely. I mean, I know it was difficult. Like it was, days it off was and difficult. free stuff. It was difficult for me to be th to be uh, thankful this morning when I was having to run for yet another two nine four in the rain. That whilst, bus is driving me mad. Whilst trying to whilst trying to avoid stories about what quite possibly the most hateful election campaign in history. God. Even Blair versus Major wasn't this bad. So how's your um, brain today then? Uh, well, you know what? I've I've thought to myself. You know, I have lots of good people around me who actively encourage me to do stuff. Exactly. You know, I have a family who. Who you know are very supportive of what I do. Exactly. And 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 you know you can we, you know we can you have roof over your head, food on the table. You know, so it it pays to be thankful for these things and you know not take things for granted and not have a sense of entitlement. It's, true. it's always Give said that the most off. the most successful people 
have a sense of gratitude rather than a sense of entitlement. I'm entitled to a day off. Everyone else has one. I want one. I'm not entirely sure what he's talking about here, but uh, he's slightly going beyond the point. Um, but it's but the thing is that is the kind of thing that makes that you know that brings that's what you know being thankful for what you've got. Oh, Stephanie. You know, and knowing that that is behind you as you progress further mm -hmm. is something that helps you. One of one friend that I started doing more um, talks at uh, events and stuff, and he said seeing me do that has inspired him to do more. See, that's brilliant, isn't it? That's mm. absolutely fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> and if you can't love yourself, how are you going to love anyone else? Indeed. Can I have an amen? Indeed. You've got an amen from me for sure. and uh, Or an amen, as we say over here. Indeed, we do. And uh, the... And, um, of course, tomorrow, and of course tomorrow with with uh, Black Friday, a lot of people sort of complain that it's becoming a that it's becoming a big thing over here. But to be honest with you, it doesn't really surprise me mm. because you know if you can get something, if you can if you can get something cheaper from the US, including shipping, no, you know, than you can down your local supermarket, then of course the supermarkets are going to have to acknowledge that. Most definitely. And the thing is, like obviously, like you were saying, it's not worth hurting yourself over, but. You know, these sales are really going to benefit the retail industry. So, of course, they're going to adapt it. Another sale on where they can slash their prices. They can get more DOS coming in. You know, we all know that the UK high street suffers because of Amazon and all the online sales. Of course, they are going to promote something which allows them to get more people in, more traffic, more money, etc., etc., more people being able to buy their stuff and some of the black friday sales start even maybe even before monday i've even seen things that have been like pre-black friday and all yep. this and is it cyber monday Something now like and all this sort week. of stuff yeah exactly it's like a whole week of black friday sales which is insane but great at the same time indeed although well, one thing that we will add is don't spend loads of money you can't afford on things you don't really need. Of course this not. This is probably the one, the time of year where it's going to happen because there's lots of places that never have sales. That's that right. Do for Black that Friday. Do for Black Friday. Be careful. Make sure you write down the rules and all the different things. I even saw this on a TV show. It was like, do your research. Look at all the different things that are on there. Make sure what you're buying is actually a bargain and not just fifty p off or something really silly like that. Because it's certainly not worth getting hurt and getting in trouble for, for like a few pence. Trust me on this one, make sure the stuff you're buying is actually on sale and not just a glorified step up, step down. Which used to happen a lot in the retail business. One minute you're charging it this much and then you put it down, ready for like Friday, and then you put it up again, and then you put it down a little bit, ready for when the sale. You know, it's it's a bit of a dodgy market, so please make sure if you're going to buy anything in the sales, do your homework, make sure it's actually a bargain, and look up probably at least, I would say, six different shops to make sure the product you want is actually cheaper. Indeed. And also, on a side note before we go, my latest tweet got liked by Bag of Chips. I don't know if you know who Bag of Chips is, but she's one of my favourite drag queens, and I said that she was a slightly naughtier Les Dawson and she liked the tweets, so that's always good. So on that note, it was quite hilarious. Thank you, Bagger, for liking my tweet if you're watching by some slim chance. <laughs> Indeed. And I recommend you watch RuPaul's Drag Race UK if you've not heard of Bagger Chips. He slash she is hilarious. Right, and on that note, thank you very much for watching, guys. It's been loads of fun. Look after yourselves, keep safe, keep well. And if you've got any thoughts on today's comments, any thoughts on today's articles, comment below. And of course, if you do donate to the show, it helps me, the boss, Badger Junior, get all different things that we need to help keep run the show. And of course, keeps our household and everything running smoothly. So if you want to help, it is much appreciated. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye for now. Bye. Thanks for watching. See you next time. And happy Thanksgiving. Indeed. Ta-ra!